Welcome back, everybody, to RimWorld. The research continues. The atomic research continues. But I've gathered from yesterday from the comment section all of your various stuff that you've left for me here. Because bear in mind, I record these only a couple of hours before they go live. So if you guys want to leave some comments or whatever, I can always act on the episode after. I don't get a backlog specifically. So if you guys leave helpful comments or whatever, I can I can act on them immediately right from the next episode. So there are a couple of episodes, a couple of comments on, on yesterday's episode I've gathered here for what people want to see. And I definitely want to implement these going forward because you have some pretty great idea so firstly we've got uh and this is something i've seen quite a lot as well turning the ancient danger which we've got right here which we never actually bothered cracking open so i was kind of worried it might be a bit powerful but we've definitely got enough people capable of fighting it now crack it open turn it into a secret research lab i know a lot of people want to see this from the outside it will look like a normal mountain but on the inside we've got genetic experiments and disgusting crossbreeding animals we've got raptor armies and that's a, the, another great comment i saw in yesterday as well was raptor lord shia labeouf wasn't quite written like that, but I thought it'd be incredible. Having Shia LaBeouf, because he has a decent animal stat, train all of these raptors in, in attack so we can release them in combat, and then using them as a living weapon. And bear in mind, we've also got things like bionics mod. We've got the animal bionics. We've got animal armor. We've got implants for the animals. Genetically engineer a super-powered raptor army led by Shia LaBeouf. That's something we're going to try and work on today whilst also building nuclear reactors and doing your basic sort of under the guise of a theme park, obviously. And that's why we're going to unlock our mountain complex and build our ancient danger rim atomics lab in there if we can. So let's get on with it. Let's actually see what's in there. So, so yesterday we actually did start the rim atomics stuff, obviously. We started working on the nuclear reactor. I don't know exactly how we're supposed to do that, but I didn't actually see any comments that had any advice on what the fuck we were supposed to do there. So um, maybe it's at the machining table. I actually never considered that. And machining table meant like evaluate components. It's just on here. Um, disassemble mechanoid. It doesn't matter. I'll, I'll look it up during this episode today. So it's not a big deal. My God, the zooms from the camera mod seems so completely random, huh? So... We want to finish off this, but I do want to crack this open first before we do anything else, so we might build this into a more permanent secret lab. Like, this is obviously just researching dinosaurs and stuff. If, if you know, take a, take a tour of the research center, come and meet the scientists. But behind the scenes, this is where we're going to be doing the cloning and the, the, real, the real fucked up war crimes. So let's get everybody together. Uh, what I'm actually thinking is let's go as far to get them equipped with the best armor we've got as well. Let's make sure we're not sending John and Trashy to their inevitable deaths. So let's wear ourselves some protective gear, if you could, John. Uh, Trashy as well. So Trashy, Shia LaBeouf, and John are going to take the uh, they're going to take the charge on this one. Force wear that protective gear, and then we've got like our helmets and whatever else. About. Oh man, they have to take off their overalls for that. It's pretty annoying. Right there we go, and then force wear a protective helmet. How are you doing, Trashy? We're almost ready to go. Right, where's our other protective helmets? Um, oh, force wear protect helmet. We've got another one over there as well. Boom. Right, so John and Trashy. Oh my god, you should wear a gas mask over the top as well. That's incredible. We'll send just John, Tra Trashy, and Shia LaBeouf things. So I can't imagine whatever is in there is going to be too strong. We'll have these guys as backup so that if things do kick off, we can quickly flee and sort of uh, lure whatever's in there around the corner and they can get shot by these guys as well. All right, let's do it. Where's, where's John? Oh, sorry, where's Trashy? Trashy, come on, my man. Why is he so slow these days? Um... He's lost a toe, but that wouldn't genuinely make you that slow, would it? Yeah, 96%. Why is he so slow compared to him now, sir? Oh, it's probably because John and Shire are just faster. All right. Let's do it. Uh, so, John. Oh, God. I'm going to have to mark him as a deconstructor. Right now. We could have... Uh, uh, Trashy has the best armor. I, I think I think Shia LaBeouf's armor is weaker, but he can still move faster. So, Trashy, get this one cracked open, my friend. We'll have John behind with friendly fire turned off so that he can shoot over Trashy's shoulder and we can kill whatever's in there. Oh, God, I hope everyone's prepared. Aiden, get your gun ready, my man. Good luck. Good luck, team. We are up against... Okay, it's bugs. That's not too bad. I was kind of kind of glad it's not like three or four center... Hello? Uh, charge rocket launcher. What the fuck? Um, fires a single anti-grain shell at precise accuracy due to laser targeting. Wow. Um, my God, this sounds like a, like a sonnet. The warhead explodes. In the air, releasing a wave of deadly electroshock, suffering dark. The weapon is engraved with artworks of six bell peppers. A gunsmith fades in the distance. The image contrasts emptiness with intimacy. I do like to get intimate with some six bell peppers myself. Uh, <laughs> surprise of life and all that. Right, let's move you guys back. And let's, uh, let's lure these bugs actually round to this area. We, we wouldn't have to worry about fighting them so much then. Not, definitely not putting our boys on the front line like that. Right, move back, move back. Uh, oh god, run a little trashy. Right, get those guys out. We kill them dead. There's three components in there. We've got the charged rocket launcher, which, to be honest, I'll probably just sell. It's excellent quality. Never before been touched worth 8,000 on the market. 
We'll just sell that. It's single use. I mean, would you really spend 8,000 silver? Obviously, they're not going to offer it at us at that price. But do we really want to spend thousands of silver on a single rocket shot? Probably not. I don't think there's going to be a threat really worthwhile on that unless we plan on the super high difficulties. We've got crypto sleep caskets containing unknown. We'll put a door on this and we'll put some turrets or whatever to, to secure this area. Make sure that no one can get into our research lab, but also make sure these people can't get out. They can be our genetic experiments. People want to see me use the mutagen mod. That's what we'll do. These guys can be our, our, our testing ground for various mutagens. Uh, is that our herd animal? Uh, herd animal. Herd animal, don't go that way. Uh, it doesn't matter if I restrict this area now, because unfortunately... Uh, let's send into little angry boys. Is that actually going to make him turn around? There we go. Oh, God, they've gone back. Trashy, you're going to have to bait them out, my man. Who's the faster mover? It's Shia LaBeouf, right? Shia, get in there. Bait them out. Let's see if Shia LaBeouf, with his axe and his 20 melee skill is as good as he looks like he could be. Oh my god, he just did 44 fucking damage, that Mega Spider. Right, run. Right, let's let's keep kind of further ahead, but not too far ahead, so that we can still bait him around. Don't worry about avoiding friendly fire. Shy can move pretty fast. Right, here we go. Yes, that's it. Okay, we're in. Oh, fantastic shot. Bait him out, Shire. Bait him out, Shia LaBeouf. There we go. Please don't shoot Shia LaBeouf. Oh, danger. Um... Okay, let's turn Friendly Fire back on, because we definitely don't want Shia LaBeouf dying here. Right, finish him off. Finish him off. Sorry, did I... Sorry, Dominique, did you not get the memo? Sorry, Dominique, did you not get the memo? No Friendly Fire? Immediately lights him up? Is that just like a horrible burn? Oh, actually, two of it is cut from the Speleopede. This thing's really holding out well. I don't know why I expected it. It's an area of effect weapon, and there's apparently no friendly fire on that. You are unbelievable. Right, at least it's only a couple of burns there. It's not, it's not a big deal. All right. Um, John Rescue Shire, for God's sake, you people are unbelievable. Let's go smash these bug hives very quickly and make sure this area is secured. There's our new lab. I think it'd be kind of cool to put our nuclear generator right in the middle, huh? And this can be our secret area. This can be our testing lab, you know, open to the public, like I said. This would be our secret behind-the-scenes disgusting genetics lab. Clear out these hives. We won't open these up yet until we've secured the area. Make sure we've got turrets and tasers as well. That's a good idea, just in case they do fight back. Zap them. Make sure they're trapped. This is a great plan. This is extremely war crimes, you know. Rescuing these people from bugs only to immediately tase them and inject them with animal morph. I don't think that's, I think that's very nice. It'll be fine, I think. Oh my god, please don't tell me you use glitter tech medicine on that, you bitch. Um, we had some spare. I don't think you would have, right? At least I certainly hope not. Where are you going with that rocket launcher? Oh, he's put it on the repair bench. Oh, that's cool. You just drop them on there and they repair automatically? Wow, that's very, very good. Uh, so what we'll do then, we'll say the storage for that is low and then clear all from it. So that you can't put anything on there unless we need it repaired, at which point we'll just drop it on there, you know, as you would. Cool. Uh, let's make sure John and Trashy have uh, have their, their their whatever they should be wearing normally, their their outfits, just to help with their work speed. We don't need the armor anymore. Shire can keep his armor on, because obviously he's Shia LaBeouf and kind of needs it. Everyone else, though, you, let's, let's not have permanent armor. It's kind of unnecessary. What else are you wearing there? What else did they take off? Was it their cape? I think it was their cape. Does the mask affect move speed? Yes, it does. I was going to say, if the mask doesn't affect move speed, we won't bother taking it off. But that also slows them down. I guess it's just the heaviness of it or something. There we go. Right, back to work then, John. Trashy, where are you, my friend? Taking his time to get over here. Thank you, Trashy. Very cool. Let's drop that one off too. So, nuclear reactor, obviously, is going to be our first port of call here today. That's going to be the most important thing we could probably do for the colony. What have you pointed out as well? And I'm really glad you did this, because I wouldn't have noticed. I thought the pallet with wrapping gave more storage space. Turns out it's identical to the regular wooden pallet. It's just the wrapping allows you to store things outdoors, whereas these have to be in a roof, obviously, indoor area. So, thank you for pointing that out. Otherwise, I just genuinely wouldn't have noticed that. So, let's get, um, what we'll do then is we'll just, and, and it's slower as well. That's the trade-off. That's why I needed to replace it. Because these things, again, can sit outdoors, but they are, they, they can sit outside, but they are somewhat slower. Right, so let's do that. And then let's just delete the, I guess we can just deconstruct the pallet, right? Would that work? This might, this might unleash a whole load of bad voodoo, but we're going to try it. Um, who's capable of deconstructing? Uh, let's go for Aiden. Aiden, of course, Aiden. Classic Aiden. Right, if you could, uh, deconstruct this one. Will this stuff just fall on the floor? Oh, yeah, it just falls into various slots. Okay, fair enough, then. Um, and then we can build another one there. In fact, if we just build one there immediately before we haul it, and then move the settings over, surely most of it's already stored anyway, right? Is that how that would work? I certainly hope so. Right, so let's go to that one. Paste settings. And now that stuff counts as stored, I would assume. Oh, no, apparently not. Okay, never mind then. Um, then we'll do the same with this pallet as well. And we'll just slowly remove all of these other garbage pallets. Nuclear research is finished, thank God. So now we can focus on some of the more end-game stuff. We can focus on building the, the, those big 
crafting stations, the things that we need for genetic rim, the things that we need for the hybrids and the and the bionics and the cybernetics and whatever else, we've actually got enough power to do that stuff now because that's really what's been holding us back, having to build constant bloody chem fuel generators. So let's go over and start work, I guess, on the secret research lab then. So... How do we want to do this? Obviously, I think the flooring needs to change. I think the whole layout of the thing. Maybe we should start off with by just digging out the walls. You know, making sure that there's probably like, we should have like a three block gap. But we can dig out some fairly sizable rooms for this research lab to have. Um, let's do something like, let's just try and echo it somewhat to its natural shape. Oh, that'll do. That's okay. That's pretty good. Hey, that's pretty good. It's going to be a pretty sizable lab as well because we've got a, a quite a fair amount of room down here. Um, do you want to expand down this way as well? Sure, why the fuck not? There's, there's plenty of room, so we might as well do it. And again, it's not like it's not like raiders are going to specifically go up to these walls and mine through it so they can get to the lab. As long as we leave the entrance open, or at least fairly unguarded, or even if there's just like a wooden door or whatever, they'll go for that. But more importantly, they'll probably just gun down our colonists anyway. So I'm probably being a little bit overcautious. Um, that'll do it for the time being. Let's see what they can let's see what they can get on with with that. So let's open those up too. Let's get Aiden down there, and then we'll sort of plan this lab out a little bit. But I think getting a nuclear reactor in this original room would be the best plan. So rim atomics. We have access to nothing. What do I do next then? So nuclear power. We re have to start the research on that. The nuclear, the, the Rim Atomics nuclear power plant is a scalable design with the ability to run multiple reactors, turbine generators, and cooling solutions in a single system. Each reactor is capable of producing more than 200 kilowatts. That's a lot. Uh, that's, a, that's a lot of power right there. When fully fueled, reactors can also be used for plutonium production. So right now we're producing, what, what's in our grid? Just to put this into perspective. Um... 5,200 watts. So a kilowatt is a thousand watts. You got to bear in mind. Uh, that's a that's a lot of energy we got right there, or will have right there when we get that. That when then we get that uh, reactor together. Right. So what do we need for this then? So we need just to research for a while. Fair enough. That will unlock some other future research as well, reprocessing and actuators. That's not too important. But this is going to unlock our cooling towers, our turbines, basically everything we'll need to hopefully get a full system up together. I believe, as far as I recall, only one person can work at the, the Rim Atomics reactor at a time. So I will reinstall both of these up to the reactor. But again, I don't think it's really going to make too much... Oh, that's a shame. Um, really going to make too much of a difference in the grand scheme of things. Oh, that's still connected there, though. All right, let's try and get them both in the same room just in case they can... Both working at the same time and, you know, double our research speed, essentially. Should have already built that in the middle of the room. Uh, obviously, I was planning out, uh, uh, planning on building the reactor into this room here. But we can turn it into another sort of dedicated room, Atomics research room, and then use this one as our sort of default research room. Um, let's get Aiden working on that. I assume right now he's just mining out. Yeah, he's just mining out the next area of the, uh, of the secret research lab. Not really much of a... Really much of a secret, given the size of the bloody thing, and given that everybody knows, but hey, as long as the guests don't know, that's the important thing. So let's move this stuff up to here, then. Might need some lights in there as well, because it's very dark. Okay, um, put that on that side, that on that side. Now, again, I don't believe two people can work on it at the same time. Might as well. If nothing else, it'll look nicer. And we've got, we've, got plenty of, uh, we've got plenty of resources right now, or at least more than we need right now. So it's not really much of a loss if it doesn't work. Uh, they're also affected by multi-analyzers, aren't they? So let's also get this reinstalled up there as well. Um, oh, nice. That actually fits well in the center. Good work. Hey, aesthetics right there. Um, let's get a lamp in the center too, just to help. Oh, ruined. Uh, just to help light things up. And can we also get a couple of these too? Because they're going to be working basically in pitch black darkness otherwise. Oh, don't reinstall. I want to build a copy of that, my friend. Okay, so that should last us some time with the actual research. I don't think we need to do anything else to set that up, right? I don't think they can connect to these or anything. No, certainly not. Okay, so that's going to allow John and Trashy to keep working on the reactor-based stuff. Should we open that door again? Now, the only reason I closed it in the first place is stop them going through the freezer there, but we should be fine. Very nice. Oh, uh, yeah, you can go free now, my friend. Um, you're, you're unrestricted. Right, so I was kind of right in the sense that they can only, only one of them can use the research bench at the same time, but the question is, can we both have rim atomics research going whilst one of them also does regular research because we've got the whole other lab set up too um actually what i want to do with john is obviously build everyone another set of tools so build them the uh oh man this is this is what we want for the mutagens isn't it this is what people want to see all right we could go for that um mutagen stabilization we need to find a way to stop yeah there we go possible to halt and prevent pawns from undergoing further mutations this is what we need before we do anything else this is the whole reason i've been putting it off because i didn't know how to stop it so, we'll queue that one up as well. I wonder if... So, Trashy can do that. Can John also work in the... Oh, that's really nice. Hey, there we go. Perfect. So, Trashy can work on the rim atomic stuff while John works on the... Oh, there we go. Right there. Works on the regular stuff. Oh, nice. That feels like a proper research lab now. If only we had a couple of other researchers that could help out. Um, Mitchie can. What, Mitchie, what are you doing right now if not that? Um, hauling wood? 
Okay, that's fine. I think I'd rather you research, though, to be fair. Because she's got potential in the area. 6 out of 20. She's not really good at much else, if anything. And would I rather her research or haul? You know, turn it into a good skill versus not getting any XP at all? I think I'd rather her having uh, be doing the research with John right now. Nice, welcome to the team, Mitchy. There we go. So what I really could do is install this stuff into here and then reopen. Honestly, I should have done that in the first place because it would mean these guys could all, you know, communicate. Maybe even talk. I don't know the distance. You've got to think about the social aspects as well. Trash is basically sitting in a room by himself all day. Speaking from experience, that does kind of drive you a little bit mad. Um, let's... Okay, okay, Let, let's move Trashy back into here with these guys. I want him to have some friends, right? I feel like he's being completely left out. So let's, um... I can't believe I'm doing this. Poor Trashy. He's on his own up there. All right, let's put that there. Sorry, Trashy. I'm, I'm rebuilding the lab once again because I don't want you to be lonely. Let's put that there. Um, I think you can still talk to them from that distance, right? How close can we put him before it gets weird? It's probably the better question. Um, you know what? Bear with me. I'm going to build this whole lab from the ground up so that everyone can work together and synchronize their research. That's a much better lab. I think that one suits what we've got here a lot, lot nicer. Start working on a little staff room as well because they don't want to be going back and forth to be doing recreation all the time. I'll try and get that set up, you know, get just a, a stock of food in there, some tables, some recreation, whatever else. But yeah, that's looking a lot, lot nicer. I thought the AI as well, the malevolent uh, AI core driven AI. Probably wasn't best just to leave it in the middle of a room in case we are hit by, I don't know, maybe drop pods come in somehow and smash it up. So that's behind a nice reinforced door. It hasn't got exactly the most HP, but it looks kind of nice and thematic there. So we'll just keep building this up as we go forward. We completed another step of the, uh, the experimental reactors in brackets high risk. There was also a bright flash, uh, which I don't know what that has done, but I guess we won't worry about it. Um... Did, did anybody go blind? That's the important... Um, you're fine. John? John's also fine. Okay, I didn't really know what happened then, so we won't worry about it too much. Is that it? Are we... Uh, and they're also finishing, obviously, the other research as well. They're in the background. Oh, they just... Right, so they're just about to start work on the mutagen stabilization, the last step of that. Man, they got that done quick. Um, so what are we doing with room atomics? We are now working on building... Oh, we have to build the reactor core next. That's why it stopped. Okay, you know what? We will build it up here then. We will build it up here because it is just a nuclear reactor at the end of the day. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's not like that's illegal and unethical. This is the area we'll put all the illegal and unethical stuff in. Nice and hidden away. Hey, you'd be nice to get in the zoo. Oh, look at his creepy little hands. What the hell? You creepy boy. Mr. Streamer pictured at 3 a.m. colorized 2019. Uh, what have we got going on then with the rim atomic? So we need reinforced. Okay, I'll remember how we do this. It's quite expensive. We actually don't have enough components. We might need to go on a little bit of a trip here up to the mechanoid compound. Um, do we really have not have any components? We could just queue them up and have someone build them. The question is, who's our best crafter? And I know, even before I look, it's almost certainly going to be John again, isn't it? Fuck. John and Trashy. Why are our best researchers also our best everything else? This sucks. Okay. Um, I'm thinking then, let's just leave our guys home to do some research. In fact, we could do with building another just research bench as well, so John can at least help out with this stuff. Because um, I don't believe we can use this as a regular research bench. Let's send Dominique and Shia LaBeouf up to the mechanoid thing to go and get those. Are they good at deconstruction? Because obviously that's going to be a fairly large part of it. Um, actually, we'll send Forks and... We'll send Forks and Teresa instead then, sure. So, Forks... Oh, Forks and Kibble are violent. And if they come under attack... Oh, so is Teresa. Fucking shit. Um, we'll send Forks, Teresa, and Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf is a caravan guard. Uh, you go and grab yourself a weapon as well, just as a sidearm. Um... What have we got here that we can use as a good weapon? Let's check our wealth tab. I know that a lot of you guys are saying don't check the wealth on weapons because obviously that's determined by their quality and their, their hit points and whatever else. But I, obviously I can look at that as a sort of general idea and then follow the rest through because DPS isn't really indicative of anything. You know, DPS, okay, we'd say the nail gun's best, but we know they're garbage from our experience. Sure, they do a lot of damage, but that's assuming they hit anything in the first place. Um, light SMG might not be too bad in that case because they have a fairly decent... Uh, heavy revolver's not bad. Makeshift crucible rifle has a decent range to it. It's actually also capable of long range, which is more than we can say for almost all of our other we weapons as well. Sure, I think I'll go for the makeshift crucible rifle just because it's got some range to it. Shia LaBeouf is a bit of a shit shot, so it needs every opportunity you can get. Um, where the hell would that be then? If only there was an easy way to actually find this stuff when we put it in the cupboards. That's my... Maybe there is. Maybe I just don't know how to find it. Okay, so he's now nicely equipped with his axe and a fairly long-range rifle there. Just give him every chance we can actually hit into something. I think he is going to be mostly a melee character, though, huh? 
So we want to send them off with some pack animals then. So let's go ahead and plan out. And that way we can at least get some research done while these guys are pissing off. Because it's not, we've seen this many times. It's fairly, it's pretty much the same thing each time, right? It's just a bunch of abandoned ship parts and whatever else. So let's form a caravan. We want to send uh, Shire. It was Teresa and Forks, right? Because those are sort of our best builders there. Um, no food. Yeah, no shit. Let's send them with some pemmican. Send them with some punch. Um, oh, that does count as food. Oh, wow. That's actually a really good cheap way to send a lot of food then. And it also weighs, like, a, oh, wow, it weighs a lot more than pemmican, but of course you need to eat, like, five times as much pemmican, don't you? That'll do. Uh, we could also send them with a package of survival meals. That's way too much. We don't, need to send, don't send them with that. It's not really worth it. Actually, don't even bother sending them with the pemmican either. Okay, who do we want to send them? We want to send any pack animal with obedience. So we'll send you. Uh, oh, that actually does need obedience. Uh, oh, need selective, right? So we've actually got a lot more than I thought. Send as many as we can, and we'll try and bring everything home. So send Teresa, Shire, and Forks as riders there. Don't bother sending that one, because that's already going to give us way more mass than we could ever carry. Okay, I think that's it. Or more mass, I should say, than we're actually going to be able to bring home anyway, with all the components. So they move at 33 tiles per day, at 1.2 days food. They've got plenty of forage as well. And then if they're not riding, then we have a total mass of... Let's just double check that. 315. That seems like a lot. We could send a couple more, but I don't think we'll need any more than that. That's the first wish granted. We do have our mutagen stabilizers done now, so we can really start messing with some people and doing some walk-arounds on those poor boys in those crypto slip caskets. Um, what are these? Chambers? Looks like a bath of mutagen where its pawns connect. Oh, it transforms them into random animals in much shorter time than usual. I'm in. Chief, I'm in so much. Give me everything. Give me everything you've got right now. We are going full-blown Animal Kingdom. Uh, and where, where, uh, where, where is our caravan? I think they just arrived, didn't they? Yeah, perfect. Okay, let's set up camp. Let's grab ourselves some components, get home. That way, any excess components, in fact, we might want to go to a couple of different sites if we can't fill up just from this area alone. We'll, um, ooh, what have we got? Oh, I got two solar panels. Nice. We could always just dismantle those. Obviously, we don't need much solar power given that we are going into the nuclear base stuff. So let's go ahead and just pick every one of these ships. 15. 15's not bad. Uh, get all of those dismantled. Let's undraft you guys. And then make sure everyone's on deconstruct as well. Because I can actually help out a little bit with that. Um, Alright, there we go, team. Go! Deconstruct, my boys. Let's get all of this home as soon as possible. Is there any, like, uh, other just spare components lying around? Anything like that at all? Um, a lot of 11 things across the map. Yeah, we'll make sure those are also obviously being deconstructed. But besides that, I think we've just got to rely on the ship chunks. Now, again, if we don't fill up, we'll just go to the mechanoid intrusion next door. Do the same thing on that one. Repeat until we are full of components. I, I don't think I'll even worry about steel too much. You know what? We've never actually tried attacking these things. Because it does say on the description of it, can be salvaged for raw materials. So, I assume like a regular ship part, you just have to blow it up. Um, let's send Shia LaBeouf with the Shia LaBeouf accent to go and hack it apart and see if we can actually get anything out of it. We might have been leaving behind, like, a ridiculous amount of resources that we just had to put a little bit more work into getting. Okay, it's gonna take him a while to crack it open. But I hope it might even have something cool in there. I'd very much doubt it'll have an AI Persona Core or anything, but it could still have something of value. Oh my god, it had advanced components in. Damn it, how many of those have we left behind and completely ignored? God damn. Shit, I'm so annoyed. Okay, never mind. Well, that's another advanced component along with everything else we've got there. They're almost finished as well. Oh, they're actually finished already. Cool. Right, so let's get you guys reformed. Let's get everything there. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Send... Oh, 127 components. That's actually too many. Uh, let's turn these guys off for being riders then. Just make sure we can actually bring everything home. There we go. Let's bring home our components, our advanced component. And steel, to be honest, 127 is more than I thought we would get. So I might just bring that home. Um... Obviously, we're packing all of that stuff. Yeah, that's that's a lot. Let's bring home just the steel then. 300 steel, 127 components. That's fine. I know I said I was going to go for maybe some more components, but that's already a ridiculous amount. That should last us quite a long time. With the, well, you know, we've got enough steel lying around that we could probably just craft some new components. And to be honest, we should probably just do that anyway, huh? And just as I get home, we finish the research on reversion. So what we can do is we can actually revert back anybody. Say, hypothetically, one of our colonists randomly started turning into a cow. We can now use that science that we've just found. God knows how we do it. I assume we have to grow some neutramine or do some drug synthesis or whatever else to actually be able to make a medicine to do that. But we could revert back into a human and maybe give him something that's a bit more appropriate. Something a bit more... Something a bit more suiting of John Hermond. I know a lot of people wanted to see if we could turn him into, say, a polar bear, for example. Which would make him just a perfectly normal man. We could try and do something like that. Or, or just see if there's something more suited to, I don't know, research. Inject him with owl DNA to make him more wise. Or, uh, look, just some garbage like that. There's got to be anything. Anything that's more useful than being half a cow, right? Oh, good lord. Oh, my god. Wow. Uh, I seem the eggs hatched. Oh. 
<laughs> How many? 79 dinosaurs packed into a tiny little 8x8 area. Wow. That's, um, was it 8x8? Oh, it's 11 by 11 Okay, it's not that bad then. It's not that bad. We're not quite at Colonel Sanders level yet. Fucking hell. Um, thank God we've got that other carnivore feeder being built pretty immediately, because these boys, holy shit, Shire, there's your dinosaur army right there, my man. Is 79 too much? Should we maybe go for 50 instead of 79? That's so dumb. Um, because even training that many, oh my God. Even training that many is going to be unfathomable. The amount of research and time and the amount of effort it would take to just, just even train half of them. Oh my god. Um. Okay. AI manager in your ultimate benevolence. Maybe we should limit them to like 20. Maybe 20 Stericosaurus is already too much. As long as we have like maybe 5 male, 15 female. Because that way the breeding would also be very, very high. This is unreal. So have all the excess males just butchered off, huh? Can we do that with the AI manager? Let's quickly take a look then. Um, I love this experiment. I really do. But I'm worried that even this isn't going to be enough to feed them. Because we just had like 50 hatch at once there. Um, oh, the, 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 the steel, the, the, the whatever his name is. The, the big boy. Michael Colossus made ourselves some ag... Ag 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 agarillux raw fungus? What is agarillux raw fungus? Is that edible? Uh, very nice to eat, even while raw. Ooh, we should probably get those hauled then, because those sound like they could be some sort of, like, luxury food, basically. Very cool. Um, yeah, I'm very concerned that that's going to get quickly out of hand, isn't it? Holy shit. Can we hear the noise? It's actually not as bad as I thought. It's actually not quite as bad as I thought. Okay, oh no, stop. Stop with that. Oi, stop. Oh, my God. There's like four of them in a row. Okay, we definitely need to do something about this then. So let's go to the manager. Let's go to the Storicosaurus. Let's say you are loud, my friends. Oh, we can sort by gender by the looks of it there as well. So we can kill off a lot of these uh, kill off a lot of these dinosaurs. Butcher excess. Do not butcher the Preganonant or Tamed or Bonded. Uh, can I say... Can I say butcher the... Okay, there we go. So, so juvenile females, as many as you like. But juvenile males... No, no, no. Well, well, juveniles, I don't know. We could set like 10. That's fine. Um, oh, no, no. Because I, I wanted them to grow fully before we butchered them, didn't we? Right, right. So we'll say we can have uh, 15 adult females, right? Five adult males. Uh, that should, in that case, butcher off any of the excess we've got when they become old enough. That way we get the maximum amount of meat and we get the maximum amount of, uh, of, of food from them. Uh, food and leather, sorry. Yeah, okay, that works. And then we've also got a good amount of breeding ones left over. Although they might end up breeding with their own mothers. Oh, who cares? It's just a it's just a it's just a dinosaur orgy. It's constant. We have a constant dinosaur orgy. That's the name of this episode. Now with all of those resources we bought back as well, we could build ourselves. Boom, reactor type A. There we go. So we probably want to put this behind some shielding. Uh so this one here. Uh, depleted uranium, very strong wall that's reinforced with depleted uranium, providing full shielding against, uh, rim atomic radiation. So, the problem with that is, of course, we actually do need to deplete some uranium to start off with, which means it's got to be used up as a fuel source. All of that radioactive energy has to be taken out of it, so that way it can be repurposed as material. I think depleted uranium is one of the heaviest metals you can get, right? Um, maximum hit points, a thousand. So you imagine building the base out of this stuff. That is incredibly powerful. Um, there's also a sarcophagus type A. So how does that work? We built that over a reactor that's gone into meltdown, huh? Okay, fair enough. So I guess we can't just put one of those in preemptively or anything. We'll build it a block away from the wall, so that way when we get enough uranium, we can stick a, we can stick a whole wall around it, so that way it's not going to leak out. For the time being, though, um, I guess we'll just do something like that for the time being. I, I mean, yeah, I, I can't really think of how else we do it, then trap it through so that maybe some of the radiation will be trapped on the other side of the wall. I have no idea how it works. I'm going to be honest. Do I look like a nuclear engineer to you? Certainly wouldn't be sat here if that was the case. So you have got to build that first. That'll unlock the next level of research. Oh my god, that's why the doormat's not working. Good lord. Okay, let's quickly, uh, excuse me, concrete over that as well. Thank you. So that shouldn't take too long. How's the, uh, oh god, the Jade Hotel is almost done. We've just got a couple more blocks to do there. Fantastic. Shia LaBeouf. He's brandishing a knife. It's Shia LaBeouf. Killing all the dinos. <laughs> oh my god. How many did we get up to in the end? Look at them. 50, 49, 48. I mean, they're, they're all old enough for this to happen. So this is going to be meat and leather for days. I mean, this is going to feed the colony for... To be honest, we could even go as far to reduce down on the farms a little bit if we're going to have this much shit kicking around. And I assume everyone's capable of hauling... To yeah, so it's just uh, just our top two research doctors there that aren't going to be the, re the, the haulers in this scenario. Wow. 
That's going to thin the numbers out quite nicely as well. Very good. We could have probably had more than that, to be honest with you. But, of course, juveniles are set to infinite. We could have 50 hatch at once. Those guys will all grow to the top. And, of course, we'll need this many feeders for that many. So, that worked out very, very well. Let's get all of these hauled before the other dinos eat them dead. Which they are! Don't eat my dinos. Get out of here. If only there was a better way to do that. Um... I guess they just ran out of food. I just genuinely don't think there was enough. Hence why there's no food lying around. There's no kibble in the kibble spot either. More importantly, look at this though. Hang on. The nuclear reactor, my friends, is good to go. Boom. There it is. Nice work. Okay. Uh, let's get that reinstalled because that looks terrible. All right. What have we got then? So is that all I need for the next step? Will that, will that complete our... Uh, so nuclear power, build a reactor core. Done. Um, and then they need to go and actually work on it. Right. Oh, they actually do need to finish building it. Oh, very cool. Okay, so those guys are going to quickly try and put that one together if they can. Fork's working on that one. Very nice. That's cool that you don't just build it. You actually do have to go ahead and, uh, like, multiple multiple layers of building. That's, that's kind of a cool little system. Progress has been made. Thank you for watching. I think we will leave it there for today just because we're on the cusp of sort of going into the big amount of, like, we basically almost finished. We've, we've got through a lot of this tree today alone. So, bear in mind, we started with, what, like, drug production? We went up through mutagen serum. What's that, like, six more research? So, we can probably get these done quite quickly tomorrow. Then we can really, really get on with the Warcrowns. Bear in mind, a couple of these are very cheap. We've got, like, 800 research there, 200 research there. Even 1,500 isn't too much these days. So, we can really, really get on with that. We've got all three researchers working on it. We've got a real nice research research lab and the nuclear reactor is actually built there they finished the actual chamber for it so tomorrow we carry on with the turbine generator which is going to be the next big one in fact we basically got a room already built for that so that worked out pretty well huh then all of this is almost hollowed out as well then we can start building our lab our secret lab and going on with the war crimes thank you all for watching hope you guys have enjoyed this episode again if you've got any comments like i said i i always check them just before i start an episode anyway and i can always uh check it whenever so make sure you get those in if you've got any suggestions for what we should do in future videos if you've got any fancy plans for our many members of society thank you for your support on the on the on the channel on the patreon as well over on the twitch i don't have my patreon list today because it is the first of the month. That means they're redoing everything and making sure that they've got the right names and whatnot. So tomorrow, we will be able to have the new and improved 2.0 Patreon list. But thank you, everybody, who continues their patronage over for another month. We are continuing with the three videos a day. So that's two CK2 and one Rimworld Daily going forward. It might kill me, but we'll wait and see how it do. In the meantime, thank you all for watching, and I shall see you guys all tomorrow for another episode of Rimworld.